now. The process Come on then, Kit, tell me what's going on here for the what's record. What's going on? Well, we're just stripping a bit of roof. <laughs> You see the old crooks holding the, uh, that held the sways, the steel sways that pegged it on, and then um, we're just down to the last course, just to take the eave out now, and then we clean the roof up, get the old crooks out, and get on with it. So we take a bundle of reed that we've butted down on a spot board to get the butts all level, and lay it on the roof next to the bit of thatch we've nearly finished, just to make sure it's lying parallel with all the other bits of reed. Move the reading pins over to hold it in place to the side and then we cut the string, pull the string out of the way and then you get your hand down between the reeds and pull through and then you just tap it up roughly with your hand to dress it back um, roughly so it's in place. Then you take a handful of reed from the top of the bundle, a little handful, only half a dozen reeds, and lay it across the course as a temporary sway to hold the reed in place while you do the final dressing. So you put a couple of crooks in, thatching crooks, just to pin it in place. Um, that holds it nice and firm. So you take the legget and give the reed another good tap, making it nice and uniform with the roof around it. Has this always been the way to hold down reed? Not always. What with the um, you know with these metal bars and it has well it used to be um, well crooks obviously before yeah crooks before that and then it was um, um, just hazel sways right um, which is the same as this but then before that they used to tie it on. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's just a torque screw with stainless steel wire. Wire on it, yep. Goes in the rafter. Get the bolts. Snack puller. Now that's what it is. Yeah. I think that just tightens it off like that. Great. Yeah. Finished, all perfect. All perfect. There we go. So, having knuckled the sedge below the chimney, we secure it in place with ligers and spars that are banged in to make sure the sedge is compacted. Once the ligers have been banged in secure and we're happy with the line, we take a knife and cut the sedge um, below just to finish off the apron. We have to sharpen the blade of the knife after every three or four feet, otherwise you can't get a good precise edge to the sedge. This is the finished thatch. Within a few months, it will have toned down to a uniform appearance across the coat. This 17th century thatch cottage in Oxfordshire has been rejuvenated and will last for many decades to come.